Job, Hawkeye. Compliments? Guess that's why he switches to Ronin. Our insider knowledge makes this a gruesome and crushing scene. Clint wouldn't even notice the dust or know what he was seeing if he did notice. We can even just barely see the family dust settling. Cold opens, in this case a scene before the Marvel logo, aren't exclusive to Endgame. All of these movies have one. But this one is definitely more impactful, catching up with an Avenger we missed last time. Infinity War actually opened on the Marvel logo, but forwent the typical theme for some dire Thanos music, since that was his movie. Now, Endgame ties us back into the emotional ending of Infinity War with some light dusting. We get the Marvel logo we've seen before, but with some blank spots, even showing where dusted Avengers should be, but aren't. You may not even notice right away, but it leaves you feeling a little empty. Granted, our remaining non-snapped Avengers just so happen to be our OGs. So, good to go. Also, the Marvel logo switched from red to black with a red 10 for 2018 MCU movies because it was the 10th anniversary and the red 10 pops on a black background. Captain Marvel and Endgame are both 2019 MCU and post-snap. The black now feels like mourning. Feels fitting that the return to the Benatar is with a little late 60s traffic, even if 62.5 to 87.5% of the Guardians are gone slash dead depending on how you count. A heart for anyone who figures out my math on that one. Also, Dear Mr. Fantasy is pretty on the nose. Something to make us all happy takes us out of this gloom. I'm going to talk about this in the conclusion more, but this entire movie is a reminder of where everyone started compared to who they are now. If this doesn't make you think about Robert Downey Jr.'s workout routine in that tank top... We opened on the Infinity War timeline, and now we're in Endgame proper with Tony's first goodbye message. It's a smart misdirect. You don't even realize the movie is telegraphing Tony's death at first. A moving and appropriate choice, allowing him a chance to look his death in the face and let Pepper know he'll be all right. This is also the same subdued but gorgeous piece of music from Alan Silvestri used during Tony's funeral. Captain Marvel to the rescue! We will miss your beautiful beard, Cap, but knowing who you have to be in this movie, I understand. Hugging and love and tearing up before the 10 minute mark? I said this movie is about comparing our current selves to our past selves, and Nebula is a prime example. A story that spans, what, four movies with Karen Gillan? Two subtle moments that mean a lot coming from her. Here, take that. You find him, you put that on. You hide. A timely reminder that Cap and Tony have not made up since Civil War yet. Let's go get this son of a Language. Listen to that Avengers score! Updated with more horns, more triumph, even the title card tells us whose movie this is. Golden, shining, solid, clean. Yup! 1940s Iceman gets to go to space before going back in time. Wholesome memes. One last little trick making you think he still has the stones is if he used the Power Stone to pull up the floor, but it's just Iron Hulk. Let's call that teamwork. I am inevitable. No one ever talks about how Thanos ripped off Agent Smith, but that's okay. It's really not the I am statement that I walk away with. <laughs> Barely comeuppance, but still comeuppance. Oh, <laughs> Thor's only saying that because you people on the internet were so mean to him, but a perfect showcase of how revenge will never really satisfy you. In fact, it's a good way to fall down the depression spiral. What a real closing to Infinity War. Starting this movie with more defeat, even in success. But how about this upbeat Avengers-y space adventure tone? The trick that's played on us. All right, let's get this son of a We'll chase him around the galaxy, fight some battles. I really, I really need it after the downer of Infinity War. Oh, never mind. He did. Oh my gosh, it's real. And it's possibly the best decision made for this movie. I asked for it in my Infinity War video, and I think everyone was a little nervous we'd get a Control Z. But goodness, is it not. Five years of living in Thanos' universe. Went on a date the other day. I, I didn't even know what to talk about. What did you talk about? My job, his job. Ideally, our first openly gay MCU character would be a main character and portrayed by an LGBTQ plus actor. But I also give Joe Russo props for being willing to take all the ridiculous, unwarranted backlash for this representation right in himself. So we'll call it a baby steps win? That's great. And even the old timer is accepting and doesn't even bat an eye. I knew I loved Cap. Gotta move on. Even before he confesses to Nat later, it's apparent that he's done moving on, as in can't, won't, not gonna move on. Thanos should have killed all of us. Uh, clairvoyance? Ha! The Terminal Beach, a sci-fi anthology book, contains a short entitled Endgame. Overkill would know all about that. 
I can hear the questions in the back of my mind about why they'd put this van in storage, but when you think about it, whoever found it assumed Scott and whoever was at the controls got dusted, and the van is registered to Scott's company, so it's probably his ex-wife's storage unit. Or she rented a space for him. Which reminds me this movie is woefully under Judy Greer. Mm. But the storage unit thing stands. Looking forward to the spin-off, The Rat. We'd all have been screwed without him. Jax Films was pitting Endgame against Avatar, but this kid knows what's up. Such a 28 Days Later vibe. Again, our insider knowledge means it's not eerie for us, just sad. Getting to see both Clint and Scott deal with it for the first time throws us right back into shock. This quick indie film tracking shot is, believe it or not, one of my favorite moments in the movie. You barely notice his running is silent because of the panicky violin. Remember when the casting of Old Cassie spoiled the time travel for all of us, but then we were dead wrong about every other part? Yeah, I mean, me too. You're so big. <laughs> Ugh, that crushing despair that you missed five years of your daughter's life mixed with relief that she's alive. Paul Rudd, sir, you are an actor. If I move on, who does this? Maybe it doesn't need to be done. But isn't that the point? The question isn't who will do this, it's what do I do without this? I'm not gonna lie, finally really digging into Nat's thoughts and feelings make it hurt all the more. Nat either dyed her hair, I mean, Scarlet did, obviously, but I like the implication that in the five years since the snap, getting a haircut or keeping up on her blonde became less of a priority, and those are Natasha's actual red roots growing out. Scott Lang, the high-angle security camera guy. Have either of you guys ever studied quantum physics? Only to make conversation. And I'm going to sing Paul Rudd's praises again. He has to capture confusion, disbelief, confusion, despair, optimism, and confusion, all while still being his comedic self. Are you talking about a time machine? No. No, of course not. No, not a time machine. This is more like, um, yeah, like a time machine. <laughs> Honesty. Tony, prepare for some guests who have some crazy ideas, and you're going to be angry about it. They'll need your help with a device only you're knowledgeable about, and if you agree, you can get your family back. You know, your surrogate son. Oh, and also maybe kill some monsters along the way. Maguna. Sly way of pretending like you didn't actually get your wish to name her after Pepper's Uncle Morgan. After your eccentric uncle. Right. Morgan. Morgan H. Stark. You want some lunch? Aw, is the H for Howard? Named after two men. Rescue shadowing. We did stand, and yet here we are. Some are still standing, but Tony sits. It's a little uh, metaphor for you. I know, it's crazy. I'm wearing shirts now. Yeah. <laughs> that is the weird part. Self-awareness. First Hulk lost, then Banner lost. It might feel a touch underwhelming as the payoff to what Hulk's problem was in Infinity War, but I, I really think it's that simple. Hulk had never been beaten so badly, and for what? The guy he shared a body with basically hated him, and no one on Earth will ever treat him as well as people did on Sakaar. This was a very logical solution. You want to take a picture with him? Yeah, you look, should. he's even saying no, he doesn't. I but get it. <laughs> Professor Hulk is a more warm-hearted and confident version of Bruce, even if the differences are pretty subtle. Oh, God! <laughs> I love that of all the Avengers, Hulk is the one with multiple catchphrases and a fan club. Say green. Bruce. Listen to your mom. She knows better. Obedience uh, advice. Pull this off. I remember a time when that seemed pretty impossible too. Flirting? Do we still we still acknowledge that stuff from Age of Ultron? Yeah, yeah. Flirting. Flirting continuity. Man who controls Iron Man suit cannot operate kitchen sprayer. Almost as if his subconscious needed to remind him that normal sea was never really for him. Oh, he sees the photo of his dad reminding him that science and engineering, yada yada. Nope, he actually did lose a child. It speaks to how much he has now. I don't personally believe Tony was ever truly anxious about the tech specifically, but losing his daughter because of some changes in the past, that's what he can't abide. This time in the shape of a Mobius strip inverted. Proof that Tony's STEM level is far beyond any of ours, since a Mobius strip inverted would just be a Mobius strip as far as I know. I love you 3,000. Oh, that's so cute, but I, I bet I never think about it ever again. What's new with composting? Interesting sign. Uh, hmm. No, I can't help everybody. Sort of seems like you can. Not if I stop. I can put a pin in it right now. Jokes aside, if this isn't character growth, Tony doesn't ask for permission, he just does. But now he has a partner and is genuinely asking for Pepper's advice. Something tells me I should put it in a lockbox and drop it to the bottom of the lake. But would you be able to rest? And they made the right call about not playing coy about where this all leads. The shock of Tony's death isn't nearly as important as preparing us and making it feel earned. Even if he sees it coming, the love of his life knows there's no rest for Tony when he has the power to effect change. Guys, this, this doesn't feel right. Yeah, well, you'd hope all the things you've done would give you a real bright burning sensation. Time travel! <laughs> I, I see this as an absolute win. <laughs> You're hired. I wound up pushing time through Lang. It's tricky, dangerous. Somebody hmm, wonder if that might work on anyone else in the future. 
Tony removing the Black Panther scratches was the right call. Could have been an awkward reminder. It's awesome. Careful on re-entry. There's an idiot in the landing zone. <laughs> Do astute observations. What's up, regular size man? <laughs> Side note, thank you for realizing how funny Don Cheadle is, filmmakers. Generosity. Also a meme win. Also full CG character handing something to a live action character. Supersonic rocket ship is exactly the kink song Thor would have on repeat in his new home away from home where nobody has to be hip, nobody needs to be out of sight, even if maybe they should be. Two CGI characters enter a house to converse with two other CGI characters and a guy in a fat suit. None, None of this makes sense. sense. <laughs> Korg barely glances away from his game for a split second. Feel free to log into the Wi-Fi. No password, obviously. Also, Korg's alive! Like, in the flesh, not just confirmed by a director. Bottle opener. You look like melted ice cream. <laughs> you mean Chris Hemsworth's workout routine? Look at those abs, just a little subcutaneous fat. Who chopped Thanos' big head off? Um, Stormbreaker? Korg is always a win. You wanna know who helped me out of it? <clears throat> Natasha, it was you. A moment that doesn't really matter if you missed Ragnarok, but you're rewarded if you saw it. Quick things like this are why the MCU works. We're not into it. Don't care. Couldn't care less. Goodbye. Not to mention this further shift from OG Thor, allowing him to truly embrace Ragnarok Thor. Man, first night shot of a city shows that roughly half the buildings have their lights out. Want to do a two-minute wonder with a sword fight at the end? You'll need Hidoyuki Sonata. Even if it's tough to believe that Ronin could beat the Twilight Samurai so easily, Hito Yuki Sanada is always a win. And Shinjin's been killed twice now in Marvel. Drifting left. One side there, Lebowski. Lebowski's dead, Tony. Hey ho, A113 in a non Pixar movie. Oh, hey, a, a bigger one. Why don't we just find baby Thanos, you know, and. First of all, that's horrible. It's Thanos. I mean, if Deadpool can't do it, none of you can. Time cop, time after time. Quantum leap. Wrinkle in time, somewhere in time. Hot tub time machine. Hot tub time machine. <laughs> all great examples. Super appreciate only one gets a double mention. You could say it's a great white buffalo. If you travel to the past, that past becomes your future, and your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. I really, 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 really appreciate this explanation. It's hard to have time travel not be a panacea for every problem that ever comes up ever again. The multiverse is the answer, even if some people may be lying about it later. <laughs> Thor's back, but he's not back. He said he was there for the beer, so he's checked out of all the important stuff. Jamming more kinks on his headphones, I assume. At first, this is just played off as a bit of sad nostalgia, but you can bet Tony made it clear to Clint that he needed to confirm objects can be brought back with them, breaking the old Terminator rule. Never exposited for us, just an example of filmmakers trusting their audience a little. Take it to Asgard, which is where I'm from. <laughs> Leave it to the nicest Avenger to try to keep the smile up for the drowning tale. Ha! Hulk's eating his own ice cream. And no one's got a fork for Nebula! This is the fight of our lives. And we're gonna win. Whatever it takes. He's pretty good, that. To be fair, he's had so much practice. But I don't ever get tired of it. Glad he got one more solid rousing speech in there. Promise to bring that back in one piece, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'll do my best. These goofy little character interactions are such a huge part of why the MCU and these team-up movies are such a gift to all of us. Rocket and Hawkeye's first time working together, first time meeting, it's that feeling I think I first described in Civil War, where my two buddies I've known independently for years are messing with each other and having a good time. It's like introducing your cool friend to your other cool friend and they both just get cooler in the process and you feel cooler by association. His promises go, that was pretty lame. See you in a minute. <laughs> Maybe smash a few things along the way. I think it's gratuitous, but whatever. Gratuitous or not? Wait, so whose workout routine is this? Let's just call it Professor Hulk's. <sighs> <laughs> Believably selling the bit. You have anything with pants? I appreciate that there's no real shade thrown at movies that weren't as loved as others. They'll do it sometimes to say, hey, look, we're cool, we hate this too, but no. You're allowed to like the dark world. It's still part of the MCU. Some people have even made videos about why it's alright to like it. <laughs> Thor found a beer pouch in his time travel shrink suit. Right here. God slap. You guys watch each other six. They take that to like the most insane extremes. Gamora's uh, saving her sister. Wow, never thought I'd miss a baddie's theme. Ronan's obsession clouds his judgment. Thanos probably predicted Ronan's betrayal from the beginning, just letting us know how cunning he really is. As far as I'm concerned, that's America's ass. Be yep, behind the scenes of iconic moments, and Tony lampshading some of the more unbelievable ones. All right, get him on his feet. And I'll stand around posing up a storm later. Flick me. <laughs> There's a side story here where Nebula and Tony meet a couple times a month to practice paper football, and I want to see it. 
My, how things have changed. Last time Tony was falling from this building, it was tense, and now he's nearly invincible. Hmm. Someone pointed that out a year ago. Hail Hydra. Ha! <laughs> the MCU finally got that moment some of the comic community was so upset about for like a week. But talk about more character oh, growth. Knowing that just because you can take them all, done it before, doesn't mean you should or even need to. Loki's alive? Maybe? Oh, that worked a treat. Dude, that was so crazy. I had no idea if I was gonna walk. <laughs> OG formal Thor mixed with rebooted Ragnarok no Thor. He was like this all along, guys. You just didn't see it. Oh, you gotta be sh Language! <laughs> yes, sir. I can do this all day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. This is one of those scenes you'd write in your head and you'd wish they'd put it in the movie, but then they gave it to us. That is America's ass. Compliments. If I give up the time stone to help your reality, I'm dooming my own. And there'd be no bargaining. I'm not sure the science really supports that. We now get to see the difference between Banner and Professor Hulk. Bruce is still unsure, a little jittery, whereas Professor Hulk barely took a second to think before going to take the time stone from the ancient one. Strange, he gave it away. He gave it to Thanos. Willingly? Yes. Why? I have no idea. Maybe he made a mistake. Or I did. I can't believe how well thought out this was. Strange knew he had to give the stone willingly to Thanos. It couldn't be taken because then the Ancient One wouldn't have known Strange saw the only outcome in which they win. Her ability to see the future, but not beyond her death, makes this all work. He sent her a freaking coded message through time and death. You asked me for multiple parts, and I literally had no other option. This movie is so dense and so long. Honestly, if I thought I could pull the entire video together in one week, I'd, I'd try, but yeah, it's just not possible. But no fake out this time. So next week, part two. In the meantime, here's Tiny Guy being tiny. <laughs>